We're back here at American Iron. Um, we're doing episode two of our podcast. And one of the things me and Tammy always talked about was this show is basically for the viewers and we want to get information out there. So it's really important for us to listen to what the viewers have and what they're looking for. And, and today we're doing something pretty special. We're bringing in uh, a top, top, top power lifter. Sure. Actually, the gym's putting on a seminar with him, so they'll be here all day, and then we're going to get to do an interview at the end of the day, um, which I'm really excited about. As, as many years as I've been in powerlifting, I still am always looking to learn new stuff, and Dan's just an unbelievable lifter, right. and I know that's the kind of guy I can still learn stuff from. And an unbelievable teacher. He has yes. a way to articulate things that I haven't heard in the past. So I'm really excited to listen to the full seminar and learn things that I can hopefully take to our lifters to make them better. Right. Uh, so it's really exciting. And there, we've gotten an opportunity to spend a little bit of time with them this morning. And they're amazing. Are they not? They're, oh, yeah. I, <laughs> even from when I first walked in and started talking to them, I was, I was pretty excited. And, yeah, just, uh, they both came off great. And, they, yeah, they, <clears> for me that's integrity. yeah. Uh, for me that's a big deal. I mean, I, I don't care how strong you are if you're not a quality person. I'm going to give you respect for your lifting, but that doesn't impress me much. But but he's a he's a top lifter, and him and Sparkle are both amazing people, and they love what they're doing, and they love helping people, and they yes. love giving back to the sport. Yes. And that's that's the kind of thing that legends are made of. Truly, one of the things they said is they really want to make this sport great again. Right, and which it badly needs. They created an excitement in me because right. they talked about some plans, the Boss of Boss Threes of bringing the top lifters in the world together right. to give a venue for the best of the best to really compete. Right, which is that's something that this sport really needs pretty badly right now. It really does. It's so fractionated. Yes. Um, so I, I'm just. And it's a, such a great sport. It's such a great sport for yes. for ranging from beginning lifters to advanced lifters and there's a whole range of things that people could take from this sport that they could use in their actual lives. Well we've talked about it before, things that I've learned in powerlifting this last 37 years. I've been able to share with people that come in that are having a hard time doing activities of daily life, right? Yeah. Yeah. And so learning to squat properly, doing deadlifts to learn to pick up things from the ground properly, that all applies to everyone. Well, it applies to, to yeah, to everyday life. Absolutely. I mean, if you got to pick some, your bag of dog food up, if you can't pick that up, what's your quality of life? Right. And if you pick it up wrong and hurt your back. Right. And diminish your quality of life. Right. And so even, even more than that for me is the, the mental the, aspect of lifting and powerlifting and even once I officially figured out my depression and it was actually bipolar and my sleep problems were narcolepsy, like I think a lot of lessons that I learned in lifting and getting to the level that I was at actually helped me deal with this and get much better control of it. Absolutely, it creates discipline like no other. And confidence. And confidence, true. Good, so, so I'm really excited to hear you interview Sparkle and Dan. I, I'm excited I'm, to do it and my goal is to, to I want to pull out the people that I've met in them and show that to the viewers. Great. All so, right. All right. Thanks, Chad. You're welcome. <laughs> we got Dan Green, his wife Sparkle. Um, gonna get some interview going on here. Hey. <laughs> um, let's, let's hop right to it. Um, your list of accomplishments is, is so long that I'm not gonna remember it all. <laughs> so I'm gonna kind of have you start. I mean, let us know the things that you've done that are hugely impressive. Uh, I think the, you know, the time I've been competing has been like seven years since I started as a powerlifter. Um, and I've, I've set a record for the total at 220, lifting in, uh, lifting in knee wraps, 220 lifting in sleeves, 242 in sleeves and raw, uh, 242 in wraps. Uh, I set one record squat, this 220, um, in the sleeves, I squatted 783 and a half. That was the, the record at the time. Uh, I guess the, the best accomplishment I would just say is that 242, I had uh, set 2210 as a total. So I was the, basically the lightest person to total uh, 1,000 kilograms. That's, that's so a huge total. Still, huge still total. my best total. So that's a, yeah. For now. That's the point I'm trying to build on. Yeah. So 
tell me, like, where did you guys grow up? How did you get into the sport? Where did you guys meet? Uh, yeah, I mean, well, first I got into lifting before we ever met. So I, I was like a lot of kids, I think, who watched Arnold Schwarzenegger. And, you know, I was like, oh, it's pretty awesome. I want to lift weights and be muscular and jacked and all that stuff. I got into lifting for that. I just wanted to get, just wanted to lift. It just seemed awesome. So it was more, it wasn't really for a sport. You got in lift to get to get big and to just lift. I just wanted to lift and my mom didn't want me to and so that made it more appealing. <laughs> <laughs> so once I started I was it just felt really good and I was just uh, addicted to it pretty much. So yeah. once I was uh, old enough to go to the gym by myself again it's like that's even better. So So how old were you when you first started lifting? Like 12 in like middle school you go to you go to PE class and you're sitting in the locker room you change into your shorts and I would like run over and max on the bench for like two seconds and then yeah that was it every day <laughs> I, think, I think we all started training similar to that yeah. i'll get stronger so let me see how much i can lift here <laughs> so like what sport did you use sports throughout high school or yeah i mean for me i played every sport you could think all of. sports yeah. yeah baseball was probably my favorite but i spent a lot of time when i was a kid playing like soccer and did a lot of gymnastics growing up yeah. um college i was on the uh, boxing team in michigan and did, i was on the cheerleading team and after I graduated, that's what led me to. You're on the boxing team? Yeah. I did not know. <laughs> After that, See, that's what. Even Sparkle's <laughs> learning something from this interview. <laughs> uh, but I know that when he was a kid, his mom kept him super active. Um, as with our son, his mom, mom, his mom is keeping our son super active. She has him in soccer. We have him in gymnastics. He started taekwondo. Um, we had him in swimming and just all kinds of sports. And that's kind of how he was raised. Even though I think his favorite that he leaned towards more was a uh, baseball but he likes all the sports for me yeah yeah i've i got a touch on the cheerleading thing because i was watching another interview <laughs> and i'm like he was what he was a cheerleader and yeah. then you said well i liked lifting and i liked girls and i went holy shit that makes a whole <laughs> lot of sense right there i like that well that's actually how we met after he graduated from university of Miss michigan he flew down to california which he's from and he was just working out at goats and my coach at the time was also working out at goats and they ran into each other like, oh, hey, what's up? Like, wow, <laughs> we're both in California. And we're both in Michigan. And he said, I'm but coaching he, the... Uh, he was your coach, but when I was first on the cheerleading team in Michigan, he was like a fifth-year senior on that team. Yeah, so that's so where we knew each other from. They were teammates together. They are both cheerleading teammates together in Michigan, but then they both graduated and moved to California, and they ran into each other at a Gold's. Yeah. And then he said, come to this, this university. I'm coaching cheerleading, and I was on the team. And then um, he came on. He came on. He came on as a, a coach, and a he started coaching me, and that's how we met. That's, a, <laughs> that's actually kind of a crazy story. Yeah. What are the odds <laughs> of that happening? He threw me in the air, and I wasn't even talking to him at first, though. He's uh, like I, this scrawny white boy. <laughs> like, no, get away from me! But then you know everything was good. I saw his truck, and I was like, okay, I'll go on a date with you. Uh, <laughs> just had to stalk her enough. And then, yeah, so, shut up. And how big was he during this time? Oh, God, he was probably like 190. Like, no, I was like 210. Okay. Yeah, he was, he was skinny. <laughs> yeah, a lot different. Before he went, no, hey, with the 200, 200, it's the marker where you hit yeah. manhood. you got to be over 200 to hit manhood. Well, he, when he was coming in practice, he was doing all kind of flips. He was like, you know, doing back flips, running, like, around him, you know, tumbling. And he was just doing a lot of flips and throwing me in the air, so... He wasn't as big as he was now. He wouldn't be able to do that. Do you do you yeah. think that <laughs> gymnastics? I mean, how do you think that, that helped you in powerlifting? Or you do you do you think it helped give you better tendon strength or ligament yeah. strength? Or I mean, honestly, I think everything helps in terms of just experience, learning how to be, become flexible and like stretch and body awareness. Those are pretty important. It's huge. You know, another thing that I think about too is you know one of my hobbies when I was you know, like teenager in college, I like to go snowboarding and skateboarding and stuff. And so the gymnastics also is similar in that everything you're doing is like you're kind of doing stunts and tricks and right. putting yourself in harm's way. So you kind of just get comfortable with the idea of just going for something. Right. And so I think when I when I lift, that's that serves me well, because I just want to attack the lift and not, you know, not get right. like nervous and psyched out. So, yeah. So, Dan, when when did you do your first meet? Yeah, 2007. It was uh, NASA Nationals out mm -hmm. in Las Vegas, and my first first ever meet. I think I spent like six months training for it, which was, in hindsight, a little too long, but it was fun. It's a long peak, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what it, and what was your total? 
Well, the first meet, I think I totaled 1,502 or 1,503. And that was probably raw, I'm assuming, yeah, back then. Just, I didn't even wear knee sleeves or anything. It was just... Went to a meet and did it? My body was pretty healthy, so I didn't need anything like yeah. that. Just the belt. <laughs> yeah, I did, uh, squatted 501, which was pretty, pretty poor. Benched 385 and, uh, or 386 and deadlifted 617. Uh, it, was a good, it was a good time. And I just liked that I got to meet all the people that were there. And it was a fun time. It was my first experience around lifters. So. And that, but you, you trained specifically for that meet. I mean, you, yeah. what made you go, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try powerlifting? Um, when I was like in my last year of college, I had decided I was going to do it. But then mm-hmm. I wound up like hurting my back snowboarding. So I, it was a year before I decided that I felt like I wanted to pursue it. And once I had graduated, I was working as a personal trainer. So then it just seemed like a good opportunity to get back into playing some kind of sport. And yeah. What, at what point did you decide, like, I'm going to go for this? I mean, uh, had you already decided it before that, or? <laughs> <laughs> I think the very first day that I like decided to do the meet, I woke up the next day and I was like, all right, I'm gonna train hard. Just, just full on from there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think the interesting thing is when I first did that meet, I looked at some of the scores of people or the totals of people had said, and I was like, okay, I think I can do pretty well. And then as soon as I did the meet, then I saw other people who were doing better. And I was like, oh, well, every time I kind of get closer to these goals, I see better goals that I want right. to shoot for. So. You know, and then I uh, went to Russia and I lifted against like all these guys who are now like world record holders and a lot of them set records on the meet. And at that point I was like, okay, so this is what like the best of the best look like. You know, they're way better than me right now, but right. I was like, I, I see what it looks like. You know, we're, you know, we're not so different. It's just going to be a matter of time before I can, you know, get to that level. So. Right. <laughs> so you, I mean, you saw yourself where you're at yeah, back then. It was pretty early on where I could see like a lot of potential. Right. I didn't know how I was going to get there, <laughs> but I, I just knew that, uh, you know, I was definitely just obsessed and yeah. I was going to do what I could to figure things out. Right. Uh, you know, I think in some respects I was, I was kind of similar in that, like, I didn't know exactly how I was going to get there, but I knew I was going to work my ass right. off and do everything I could do. And I would just, I'll figure out how to get there. I will get there. I just need to figure it out now. I think the best thing for me is like, I wanted, I just wanted to learn. And I wanted to get experience lifting. I wanted to lift with other lifters. I wanted to go to meets. And so the thing I, you know, all you can do is control what you can control, which is like you can go and train, you can get yourself around other people, but if you keep your eyes open, then you can, you can learn. Right. If you're kind of set in your ways, you know, you're not going to be open right. to like learning from other people. But if you put yourself around other good lifters where you can learn from them, most of them are pretty nice and they tell you like what they do. Yeah. yeah. And so you can kind of, figure out like, oh, this is what the people who are good at squatting do. Right. <laughs> I need right. to start, you know, kind of mimicking a little bit of what they're doing. So I just learned a lot from different people and eventually things come together, but you just have to be open-minded, you know, right. at least I did, you know, I never right. had a coach. So I was always just trying to figure out what all the, the you know, people I, I thought I needed to copy what they did. So, right. so that's actually kind of a, a similar experience <laughs> that I've had and, and a lot of power lifters. I mean, I think, that's one of the things that makes powerlifting great is that there's so many of the top guys are so open to answer questions and help. And like, I mean, even we've talked about Ed Cohn, who's, I think Ed Cohn's like the greatest of all time. And one of the reasons is because he's so open. Like I've seen yeah. him spend hours helping people and talking yeah. to people. And I mean, I think that for me, that part of that like made me want it even more because I'm like, dude, this is cool. These people are cool. I like doing <laughs> this, yeah. you know? Yeah. It's always good to run into good people in the sport, you know? Yeah. So what kind of program are you doing right now? And had, what types of programs did you try to, to get where you're at now? Yeah, I mean, I think early on I was training, you know, like stuff you'd read in Arnold's encyclopedia. So doing like three sets of eight on bench and dumbbell, right. you know, just like a bodybuilding split. And that got me pretty far. Like that, that was good. I, I I definitely still benefit from like that style of training and, you know, learning to kind of feel what you're doing when you lift a weight, not just right. power through stuff. So you can build, build mass. And then you know, when I started training, I was trying to follow like a West side protocol and, you know, I got better at certain things. Like my deadlift went, went really well. My squatting went really well when I did the box squats, but in meets, it didn't really seem to carry over. And, you know, just some of the experience of like meeting and seeing better lifters than me, like, world record squat type lifters, like that's where I kind of 
started to figure out what the real top guys do, and at least in the raw lifting. So, right. Um, yeah, and I just kind of like try to learn from everybody and put my own program together. So that's uh, that's pretty much it. You know, sometimes you just train hard and you know hope for the best. I mean, would you say like, you know, we just finished up a seminar. It, it seems like it's it's definitely not a regular linear program, but it's. I mean, it's. How do I say this? Like, <laughs> well, it's a blend. People like, would go, it's linear, but I go, it's not linear because right. he's done tweaks to it, you know. So, yeah, I mean, my thing is like, I always, like, I want the best of, you know, I want the best of both worlds. I never want to just like gravitate towards extremes on things. Like, right. So, to me, it's like, I want to have, want to have uh, practice on my lifts, but I also want to have variations. And, right. you know, I, the person I've ever, the best person I've ever watched deadlift in person in their training, like, I learned a lot from him, and he was just, uh, you know, probably not as well known, but he was like a 198, 220 pound guy, and he, he just, when I would watch him train, it was just like, okay, we're just gonna deadlift and just hit tons of reps and get, you know, really, basically just really brutally worked, and <laughs> it's not complicated, right? You know, so that was like, yeah. I need to train like that. I need to, you know, right? And I don't know, that just that that just worked really well. It, what I like for my program is I have enough sets and enough reps of exercises that I like that it just allows me to train hard and let how hard I train take care of progress. Right. You know, so instead of having to have a program that's so smart that it's gonna work, <laughs> right. I just have a program that's good enough and what I put into it and kind of using my experience to like, you know, know how hard to push on the gas or how much to back off. Right. You know, that's, that's the trick now. If I coach someone else, it depends. I might be like very strict and tell them exactly what to do and not give them any wiggle room or I might, mm -hmm. If I trust them a little more to make good decisions, I'll right. You know, I'll let them play around with reps and weights and sets and stuff like that. But right. for me, I mean, I have to go on my own experience, so I definitely make adjustments as they go. I'm very big in the mental aspect of lifting. Um, actually, above all training and technique and everything, I love the mental side of it more than anything. What would you say your mental state is, say, at a competition lift? Like, I mean, what's going through your head? <laughs> I think it's interesting because when I when I squat, I think it's all about just like focus and and just in like one instant, just attacking the lift for me. And I, I think about it as like coming from precision and just like you know all the all the build up and all the sets and training days and reps that I've I've led up to that point, you know, just culminates in kind of really dialing in that big attempt. And it's heavy enough right. where you should be nervous. You know, maybe you can say you're afraid that oh this is gonna be I don't know if I can do this but then to still just trust your technique and your training so you just go for it. Right. And there's gonna be a moment where you can't hesitate, you just have to like hit the squat at the right speed, which is you know, not, not going slower because you're afraid of the weight, right. but to just attack. And so that part I like, and usually once I make that squat, my confidence goes way up because I'm like, okay, that's the biggest part of the meet. Right. So um, like the, basically the first squat, <laughs> once the first squat's done. Well, the squat's like, like first, second, and third, yeah. they all build up. Yeah. So the third one I'm usually First one, I'm nervous just because I'm nervous. The third one, it's like, it should be challenging. So right. that's where I'm nervous because I got to actually right. make it happen. But I, I don't know, I like to think about it as like not getting too emotional, but just committing to like the moment. So I think about it almost like, a, like an assassin, not emotionally involved in the lifting, right. but just knowing that, okay, there's going to be a moment and then it's going to be the time to hit the lift and just to go for it and, right. you know, trust that everything you've done to set it up is, is in the right place. So it's kind of like a controlled adrenaline type. Yeah. Thing. But when I, when I deadlift, I do like to kind of channel, you know, anger and stuff like that. Cause yeah. it just helps for me to just be more aggressive that way. <laughs> really? Do you, I mean, do you know, I mean, why, why do you think it's different from one to the other? I think it is it is similar in a lot of ways it's just that's just kind of how i approach just it how you do it yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, th I think every i think they're all everybody's different in that respect because i kind of compare myself to vogelpool where i lift completely on emotion and anger <coughs> and rage and pull up every possible yeah. thing in my life that i can and then i look at guys like ed Cohn who is just so calm <laughs> but his squats are perfect and and i go there still has to be that like you're describing that, I mean, you, you're, you're positive. I mean, you, it sounds like, you know, like I'm going to get this. You're, it's just a different way to get there. Yeah. For the squatting to me, it's all about like speed and precision. And for the, for the deadlifts, I think 
the, the thing I think about is like I have to pull harder off the floor than I, you know, I can do it without being like angry or just like in a right. kind of a zone. Yeah. So you have to kind of channel that because I feel like I have to initially pull the bar harder, you know, right. than I've ever pulled it. And that's, that's aggression. Whereas the squatting, it's like speed and precision to me. So, right. So it does, does definitely help to have a little anger channeled up, especially with deadlift too, because how hard you grip the bar makes a big difference. Whereas like in the squat, I don't really think about how hard I grip the bar. That's not really what I'm thinking about. Right. So. <laughs> That's interesting. Do you, do you approach heavy lifts in the gym in the same way? And, and, and how do you approach like everyday training, depending on what day it is? I mean, do you have, I mean, how some people want to yell and scream every time they go in the gym. Like, I mean, is it, how would you say you approach those lifts? Um, I'll say it's similar, but there's just not as much adrenaline. Right. And, you know, I, I know there's not as much pressure on me to make the lift. I know it's just a matter of like making progressive, you know, training, not getting hurt. Like those kind of things are the important factors when I train. But, you know, in the meet, that's like the moment, you know, you don't get like second chance at right. the meet. So you make a mistake in training, you can kind of redo stuff and that's fine. Right. But in the meet, there's just more adrenaline because there's more, more pressure that you put on yourself, you know. Right. So you, I mean, you still have the same aggression. It's just toned down a little bit because you don't need it. <laughs> I don't really feed off adrenaline in training. I, I still get the same kind of nervous energy, mm -hmm. but yeah, I mean, my, my focus is on quality and training right. and making adjustments. Whereas in a meet, I might make adjustments from my first and my second lift, but for the third one, I don't think about that kind of thing. I just, I should be adjusted and dialed in and then aggressive. Kind of all the work's done <laughs> and now it's time to show what I can do. Kind yeah, of like refined every last detail for the third attempt. So it's just this one moment that all that training has been building up for. So. Right. Now, I like that feeling, and it's it definitely gives me more of a adrenaline. To some think of this, that way. some of that I was listening to in your in your seminar. It seems like your I mean your whole program is is set up to go like here's here's where I'm going to be. This is the number I'm going to hit. Now I know there's a lot of different mentalities in lifting, and I've seen a lot of guys that can put huge numbers up in the gym, and they go to a meet, and they're horrible. Mm -hmm. Would you say it's you're a meat lifter. It seems to me like you're a meat lifter. I feel like like you do what you need to do in the gym in order to hit that. And then you go hit that in the yeah. meat. Yeah. I mean, really my best meets are the ones where my training has, I've dialed it back just enough. So I don't like get ahead of myself in training. Right. You know, I'm just building better lifts each week, each workout and not, I don't need to like find out how strong I am. I can sort of assess from non max lifting. Right. For, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I think I, you know, I feel like I go into the meets and I hit what I need to hit and I do pretty well as long as, you know, I don't feel like my technique or my like readiness usually fails me on that. Right. It's just some days you feel a little stronger, some days you don't, but right. Yeah. Another thing that, that this is actually, this is the first time I got to meet Dan <laughs> and, and Sparkle and I'm having a great time. I, I, I like you. Guys. Um, one, one of the things that it was good, it was my second <laughs> breakfast. It was good. Um, one of the things that impresses me, and I, I actually, I've had a, a lot of people lately talking about balance and people that quit powerlifting because yeah. they said they can't find balance. <laughs> and like you guys manage a lot of stuff. Yeah. And you have your business, your gym, your son, mm -hmm. your marriage. You're still one of the best in the world. Socialized, like, yeah. so I hear people, <laughs> I need balance or it's obsessing me like, you guys do it. Yeah. Like, I mean, what would you tell those people that, that say, I can't do it, it's too hard? I don't have anything to say to them, but <laughs> I would say for me, there are two things. There's the desire, so just determination to accomplish what I need to accomplish. Right. So you're going to do what it, what you, what it takes. Right. Uh, that's, I totally agree. Uh, you're going to find a way. The second thing is, to me, like, I hate when things are inefficient, so... I, th I would think about like the, like, let's just say the 80, 20 rule, yeah. which is that, you know, 80% of your progress in the gym comes from 20% of the stuff that you do, uh, or you can apply that anywhere else. So the, the important part there is the last 20% of what you do in, you know, in terms of progress takes 80% of the work. So basically the meat of potatoes, and then there's like all the fancy like details to the training, right. but the fancy details can, if you avoid those things, you can save a lot of time so you can balance other things out. So basically, you know, to get a really good program, you can do that efficiently. To get every last detail that you want in your program, like in your dream program, that takes a lot of time and a, 
you know, a lot more time, you know, than it's really worth if you have other things you need to get done. If I was, when I was a bachelor, yeah, I'd train like four hours a day and it's fine. Yeah. You know, if you have pregnant wife <laughs> at home. It's a little different. You want to spend four <laughs> hours in the gym, that's kind of ridiculous. So you're going to be like, all right, I got to get this done in like 75 minutes or 90 minutes. And then right. I don't need to like do five sets of concentration curls after my, right. you know, after my lifting. I need to go home and the squatting, the deadlifting, the benching, you know, the, the basics, that needs to get it done. And then I need to, you know, I'll just wait on the other stuff. <laughs> right. No, so, ba I mean, basically, it can all be done. I mean, yeah. you guys are proven that, that, that it can all be done. But, you know, the opposite. Yeah. Like, I've had people that I train with, and they're, like, they're just bad at, like, staying on pace and stuff. So they, they have a workout to follow, and they're, like, running out of time. And they're, like, should I, just, should I just skip ahead to the other stuff? I'm, like, no. You only do that stuff if you get to it. Like, right. The important stuff is first, you know, the... Yeah. The, the fun stuff or the frills, that's last. You don't need to do that unless you finish off the big stuff with time to spare. So right. that's why I think about it for, and for work too. Like I hate, I hate it when there are little details that take up uh, you know, a disproportionate amount of time to, to sort out. And some right. of the things when we have you know, kids and business, some things are just frustratingly inefficient. And that's, right. just, you know, that's just the responsibility you have. So. Yeah. In the end, you just control what you can control, and if you want to get something done, you do it. If you don't, you know, you right. find an excuse. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's definitely tough, but if you're, you know, if you're serious about something and you really want it, then you're going to get it done. Yeah. You know, and we just, we've been blessed and fortunate to have, you know, just a ton of people on our um, team just helping us out. Mm -hmm. You know, especially we have our parents who watches our son. Um, that's, he's with, who, who is he with right <laughs> <laughs> he's with your mom. <laughs> no, he's with my mom. Yeah. So I mean, between both of our parents, um, you know, they watch our son, which is just, it's just a lifesaver. They kind of fight over who's taking our son. So right. that's a blessing. That's a good thing. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and then with his, um, you know, with his training, I try to manage a lot of the gym so that way he could get his training in. Um, but just staying on a schedule and just being organized has definitely a huge, a huge, huge, huge plus. Right. So we do, we do find time on the weekends to um, to make sure we do spend some time together. So it's just keep yeah. Us so it's a priority that so that's still a priority in your life. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, priorities are big. You know, if you say I want to do this, but your actions are like, well, you wasted yeah. three hours watching you know a TV show or playing video games, and, and now you're like, why can't I sleep yeah. and why can't I train? Yeah. You, you just have to choose. Well. <laughs> 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 you gotta, gotta make decisions. <laughs> So let me ask you this, because I'm single, but a lot of my training partners are, are married or have girlfriends and yeah. stuff, and I've had girlfriends at a time. And the, most of the guys will probably all agree with me that they're always getting hounded about being in the gym and working out. Yeah. I mean, and I've always thought, well, if you can just find that girl that goes, hey, this is like, I like that you do that, and I think it makes yeah. you better, so I'm going to kind of deal with it. I mean, how is that for you? Do you ever get ticked off because he's in the gym too much? or? Um, well, actually, we both we both are in the gym too much. So, <laughs> so I guess if he's in the gym more than I than I am, then yeah, I guess it's an issue. But I know that when I, you know, when I met Dan, he's he's always had a passion for lifting, and his he's always been on attic. You know, he's always loved lifting. So for me to come into his life and tell him what he can and cannot do, that's that's just uh, wrong. You know, for me. Yeah. Um, but one of the things that he just loves is just lifting. So. We try to make sure we balance everything. And I, I enjoy lifting myself, so if we could, you know, lift together or incorporate into both of our schedules, then it works out. Um, but no, I don't, we don't ever nag each other about yeah, I mean, you know, I, what we want to spend time on. I, I, I really want him to get in the gym because I know that's what he wants to do. But, you know, as we discussed, we have busy lives. So yeah. the gym is like one of our priorities we try to keep on our schedule. Right. I yeah. think when we were dating, it's probably the only time. Like before we had a kid, before we were married, that's when it's like, shit. Well, can I see you? I mean, can we see each other again? Because he didn't want me around. He was training at Gold's, and then he trained at some like mom pop shop, and and all the gyms he trained at while we were dating. So like like eight years ago, he just didn't want me in the gym. He's like, no, the gym is my like man cave. It's my time and myself. So I was like, whatever, you know, I don't care what you do. I get you on Saturday. But then when we got, you know, when we got, um, you know, engaged and had a son and married, um, he's want me in the gym, like, more than he's been in the gym. Like, lift, lift, lift. So he's been pushing me. Yeah, so that's like the two things is, uh, 
at first I didn't want her to come around and I felt like yeah. uncomfortable when she would be there and I'm lifting and, yeah. and now I like it. And now, you know, when she lifts, like that's fun for me to watch. And uh, I don't know, that's like pretty good quality time and we can actually work out together. So I like that. And the other thing too is like, yeah, I mean, if I'm at the gym, I don't need her to tell me like, you know, our son is like exhausting to, you know, to take care of. So I know like I need to balance, like I need to get my shit done. Like yeah. I said, I need to get the important stuff done, but I also right. need to help her out. She understands that I do what I need to do, but I need to right. also like try to get home. And <laughs> but yeah, that was in your training. You said, I want to do this and I need to, this is the time I have. And yeah. you made it work yeah. and are making it work. And I think that was actually when she was pregnant, that was the time where I really had the biggest like change from, you know, training four hours a day if I wanted to, twice a day. So like, I need to get these workouts in like 90 minutes. And so I really learned like, what do I need in my training? And what do I just like, what am I doing at the gym the rest of the time? Like, right. what, well, is, I mean, what do I really need? You still spent four to five hours training. No, like now we're in a good place where I can, yeah. I can take time some take days. Forever. Like, <laughs> so you, That's, uh, you train for four hours? Does it take four hours? I'm, I'm, I'm single. I'm the wrong guy to talk to. <laughs> I, I, I love this gym with everything I have, but like I started training at home because I couldn't get out of here. Yeah. Well, no, that's <laughs> I, I trained for two hours and I talked six. for two. You don't come home at like 10.30. I'm like, all right, whatever. I'm in a bit. <laughs> I really want to thank both of you guys for coming and giving us this time Absolutely. and giving our viewers this time. And I want to thank all our viewers for tuning in. Um, you can check out our next episode at American-Iron.com. Click on the YouTube link. Uh, Monday at 6. And we're going to wrap it up.